bitch. Where's my money? If you want to help me out, you can subscribe to me on Patreon, which is Grimachu, on Subscribestar, which is Grim Jim, or if you want to make a one off donation to help support me and keep the channel going, you can do so at paypal.me, jdesborough. Thanks. I'm going to tell you about an accident. I don't want to hear act of God, okay? Hello, lovelies. There's big political changes happening and a new year has rolled over and so a, a man's mind turns to his past, to his future and where he is today and, and where he wants to be. So I find myself looking back at older games, thinking about projects coming in the future and that got me thinking about Weapons of the Gods. Weapons of the Gods is an RPG based around, let me try and get this pronunciation right, Wuxia, or Wuxia as some people call it, Chinese Kung Fu movies, uh, but in particular Weapons of the Gods is based on a Chinese comic, um, manga is the Japanese term, I don't know what the Chinese specific comic book term is, but most people refer to it as Chinese manga for some reason all based around the kind of Usha idea, you know, over the top martial arts, acrobatics, chi powers, all of that kind of, kind of thing. And as, like I say, this was an RPG Net darling back in the day. Unfortunately, RPG Net is well past its heyday. It's a wretched hive of scum and villainy, and I wouldn't recommend going there anymore. But this was a darling of that forum at the time. You know, far back enough that I wasn't banned from RPG Net, and thereby hangs a long tail. Actually, it's a fairly short tail. I didn't like the New World of Darkness, and said so on multiple occasions, and uh, that eventually got me got me banned. <laughs> now that really pisses me off to no end. Still, everyone was banging on about Weapons of the Gods for some reason. And yeah, this happens, it's cyclic, you know, new games rise up, get a lot of attention, then sink without trace on a fairly regular basis, and this is what happened with Weapons of the Gods. So it's an RPG based around Ustia, and it has the same problem that most games that I've played based around that sort of milieu have, the same kind of problem that Exalted has. There's a, there's a good base idea and a reasonably simple and graspable baseline system which is then bloated by all kinds of complications and exceptions and particular special rules regarding any and every power that your character might take on. Hey, what more can a guy ask for? Oh. A six demon bag. Terrific. A six demon bag. Sensational. What's in it, egg? Wind, fire, all that kind of thing. And that slows it down, not to the same degree as, as Exalted gets slowed down, but it slows it down and renders the game practically unusable and sucks the kind of life out of it. If you watch or read Lucia material, then it's all very kinetic, it's very action oriented, it's, it, it flows fast, you read it quickly, you watch it and the fights are all heavily choreographed and extremely rapid and, and breathtaking. Combat always takes longer in tabletop RPGs, but with things like Exalted and with Weapons of the Gods, combat slows down to an utter grind. Which, which sucks all the life out of it and fails to replicate the genre, I think. I think the only game that has really managed to replicate the genre uh, is Feng Shui. Is it getting hot in here or is it just me? With its stunting system and its very, very simple system. And everything else is like a pale comparison to that. But sometimes you want something with a bit more meat on its bones. So you want your style of Kung Fu to make a difference, to have access to particular powers. Feng Shui did that to an extent with the various sort of paths you could take to, to earn different powers. But it never got bloated and complicated in the same degree that Exalted or Weapons of the Gods does. 
And the baseline si system is pretty simple. You have dice pools of 10 sided dice, normally one to seven dice, and you try and get sets. So you try and get two of the same number, three of the same number, four of the same number, and so on. And your result is 10 times the number in the set plus the die result. So a set of two threes would be 33, for example. You can also take dice out of what you've rolled, but which are part of sets, and float them in the river, which is kind of a, a poker term, I think, which is basically you setting them aside so you can then use them later. So you can't use them on that roll, but you can draw on them in the future to get a better roll on something else that you've done. If you score tens and succeed, you get a lucky roll, which gives you joss, which is luck, essentially, to use later on. If you roll tens and fail, it's an unlucky roll and gets you corrupted joss, which you can use to put bad luck onto other people. Difficulty margins are 10, 15, 18, 20, 30, 40, 60 that you have to get over. Um, you have margins of success. Modifiers are typically plus or minus 20. Um, specialities give you an extra dice and so on. So the baseline system, it's not really a dice pool system, but it works in a similar way to a dice pool system. And it's relatively quick and easy and has some nice ideas like the river where you can where you can float your dice. So to give you an example of a character, I made up a sort of drunken monkey style character uh, called Chung. He was a warrior. You could be a warrior, a scholar, or a courtier. Those are the classes available. Um, as a warrior, you can spend your chi points to enhance your dodge. Chi is a sort of pool of points that you get. But you get different kinds of chi according to your different statistics. Though, confusingly, it doesn't name the statistics after the type of chi or the type of chi after the statistics. So... Chung has Might 5, Speed 5, Presence 3, Genius 3, Wu Wei 4. And his chi is, I think it's Silver Chi is one of them. But yeah, it's not immediately intuitive which kind of chi marries up to which kind of stat. Uh, you get a bunch of skill points. So I gave Chung Athletics 3, Dodge 3, Fight 3, Hardiness 3, Melee 3, Awareness 3, Confidence 3, Ride 3, Senses 3, and Tactics 3. Um, and that's pretty much how it, how it goes. You can be pretty good at most of your starting skills. Health is divided into levels, and Chung has 20 health per level. Starts with three Joss and can put two dice in his river if he wants to. You get advantages and disadvantages. I think you can start to see where the complications start to pile up here. So Lightfoot Kung Fu, um, which all warriors get, which lets you do things like leaping from bamboo stalk to bamboo stalk. Uh, drunken monkey styles, monkey capering, you can add chi to a particular dodge roll, monkey roll, add silver chi to your armor to get out and it gets you out of a tight spot, uh, monkey antics which is just an advanced and capering, but you know all of the different kung fu styles and there are a lot and a lot of background options and opportunities and societies and cultures that you can be a part of, it all adds hideous complications. Another point of comparison would probably be Tristat, uh, which powers Big Eyes, Small Mouth, in which the, the basic system is extremely simple, but all the complications and exceptions really, really fuck up that, that simplicity that's there to start with. Um, I put Chung through a quick fight with a couple of guards, and while these were sort of standard guards taken from the, the, from the rule book, the fighting just felt kind of repetitive uh, when I ran through the scenario. I was just doing monkey rolls all the time so that I only had to face one guard at a time and had armor against their attacks. And despite all of these options and so on, that was clearly the best idea to do each and every turn. And so it became a grind of them missing me or failing to do enough damage and me striking back and just doing a small, moderate amount of damage and not really <laughs> getting anywhere. So, I mean, what can you really say about it in the end? It, it has that same problem that a lot of games that try to replicate this kind of genre have. The basic system is fine, dandy, simple, nice, lovely, works to a degree, though it's a little bit unwieldy compared to straightforward dice pool systems. Um, 
but everything that's placed on top of it loses that simplicity and takes it further and further away from the the feel, the style, the genre emulation that you really want from something like that. When you play a kung fu movie, you want to be deadly to be able to take on huge crowds of people, except for you know the the, the big bosses, the people who have comparable levels of, of kung fu. And this simply doesn't do that, um, at least not with starting characters, and the, the complications just get in the way. In terms of style, it's a it's a lovely book. You can still get it on PDF. Um, I don't know whether you can get it on print on demand or whether you have to go to secondhand markets for it. There were a, there were a couple of supplementary books. You can do without them. Uh, quite frankly, the artwork is mostly taken from the comics, so that's very nice. But the Chinese style of of manga. Um, can be a bit jarring for people who are more used to the Japanese style of manga. It's not quite as smooth and well executed necessarily and the character proportions and so on are uh, a little bit off what you might be used to. Um, but you can use the system if you really want to to, to replicate other martial arts um, or sword play manga or Japanese manga if you want you know the system's easily rip offable it's just totally weighed I mean it's a thick tome and it doesn't need to be and it's totally weighed down by all of these other options but presentation wise it it's fine I'll give it a, a four out of five for style I think reusing art can sometimes be a bit lazy and I don't think the Chinese manga is up to the same quality as Japanese manga so that's why it's a four rather than five in terms of substance there's a lot here but it bogs the whole game down so while it's got a lot of substance that the amount and the nature of it actually brings the substance down because it renders the rest of the game bloated and unusable so in terms of substance I can only really give it a two so that's six out of ten or three out of five it's Overall, it's deeply average. It's interesting from a game design point of view and from a point of view of me looking to my sort of Western Asian um, mashup, sort of cowboys and kung fu thing that I've been thinking about. But it doesn't feel particularly playable. Um, now, I know people will contradict me and have played it successfully. Bully to you, but I think you succeed in spite of the system and the book, not because of it. Zang. Old Fat Punks is part caper, part comedy, part nostalgia and part commentary. It follows three aging punks as they build themselves up for one big, nihilistic last hurrah. You can buy Old Fat Punks at Amazon, Drive Through Fiction or Lulu.com. Follow the links below or search on those sites.